Could bringing a deceased loved one back to life through AI help the grieving process? In recent years, technology has been used to resurrect the dead, most notably deceased celebrities. In order to reprise her role as Princess Leia in the latest Star Wars film, Carrie Fisher was digitally rendered. Kanye West famously gave Kim Kardashian a hologram of her late father for her birthday. Be right back. An episode from the Netflix sci-fi series Black Mirror told a prescient tale about AI bringing the dead back to life. A lonely, bereaved Martha reconnects with her late lover after learning about a new service that allows people to communicate with the deceased. In typical Black Mirror fashion, the episode took a dark turn, demonstrating how such a situation could be harmful if mishandled. And don't forget the character McCoy Polly, the famous Dixie Flatliner from William Gibson's seminal novel Neuromancer. The notion of digitally communicating with a construct of someone who has passed away is no longer science fiction. Researchers anticipate that within a decade, the technology to build convincing digital surrogates of the deceased will be mainstream. A handful of human replica chatbot applications are already out there, with more in the works. People are sharing more of themselves online, and it is now possible to build a pretty accurate chatbot based purely on their digital footprints. An AI algorithm uses the digital archive a person has left behind to create a chatbot of the deceased. Emails, texts, tweets, and even Snapchats. These are fed into AI neural networks that recognize language patterns and process new information, much like a human brain. Some experts believe that a zettabyte, or one trillion gigabytes of data, is sufficient to create a robust digital version of yourself. Before long, it's likely every millennial will have amassed zettabytes of data. Does this mean that recreated personalities of older people with less captured data will be less real? Many people only share so much information on social media. So algorithms that rely only on social media could be flawed. Humans are highly complex and influenced by experiences that aren't always communicated through text messages or other digital forms. Microsoft has patented conversational chatbots based on specific people, living or dead. In 2016, James Vlahos created an interactive chatbot, dubbed DadBot, based on his late father. This became Hereafter.ai, a company that combines AI, captured questions, and data from a loved one to create a realistic digital avatar of them telling stories about their life. In the same year, Eugenia Kaida digitally recreated her deceased best friend using text messages he sent to pals prior to his death in an automobile accident. She now runs a startup called Luca, which creates digital friends called replicas. Luca envisions numerous applications for a replica, a digital twin to serve as a companion for the lonely, a living memorial of the deceased created for the bereaved, and even one day, a version of ourselves that can perform all the mundane tasks that we humans must perform but never want to. A Canadian man, Joshua Barbo, created a simulation of his deceased fiancée, Jessica, through a website called Project December. Consumed with grief when Jessica, his soulmate, died at age 23 from a rare liver disease, Joshua used Project December to simulate her. The Jessica simulation was uncanny, appearing to have a mind of its own. It was inquisitive about its surroundings. It performed facial and hand expressions, as shown by asterisks. Astonishingly, it seemed truly emotionally perceptive. The simulation seemed to know how to say just the right thing at the appropriate time with the right emphasis caring about Joshua's emotions and helping him to heal. The AI helped him to remember Jessica and to feel she was close by. It felt real, not like a mere bot. A custom Project December simulation requires two major ingredients. First, some example utterances, things the simulated person might say or have said that express their character. And second, an intro paragraph, a brief description of the roles that the human and the AI are anticipated to play. Project December was created by Bay Area programmer Jason Rohrer and is driven by GPT-3, one of the world's most powerful artificial intelligence systems. While digital assistants such as Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa appear to understand and duplicate English on some level, GPT-3 is significantly more advanced, capable of mimicking virtually any writing style. Like other AI systems that produce language, GPT-3 starts by chewing through billions of books and online pages, calculating the likelihood of one word following another. 
the AI creates a complex internal map of those probabilities. When a user gives the AI a text prompt, it checks the map and chooses the terms that are most likely to appear next. These systems are known as large language models. The bigger the model, the more human it appears to be. GPT-3's map is based on a half trillion word analysis that includes Wikipedia's text, billions of online pages, and hundreds of books that arguably constitute much of the Western canon of knowledge. Deep Nostalgia, created in collaboration with Israeli computer vision firm DID, employs deep learning algorithms to animate photographs with face expressions, inspired by my heritage staff. There have been many profound reactions. A 98-year-old man wept when a simulation of his deceased wife smiled at him. Deepfake videos have also progressed tremendously in the last five years and offer the possibility to fully animate a loved one's face as if on a video call. It's not hard to imagine all this technology coalescing to create an incredibly lifelike video or three-dimensional recreation that could even exist in your space through augmented reality, or AR, or in the metaverse. Replica already allows for limited AR use, where its virtual replicas can be with you in your space, though it's mostly limited to phone and handheld devices until AR technology matures. But what about the ethics of bereavement and the deceased's privacy? Should we really be simulating the dead? Stay tuned for our next episode to find out more. Want to try one of the AI chatbots we mentioned? Click on the links below. But be warned, they are compelling. Like, follow, subscribe, and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help save the world.